Brothers and sisters, friends, neighbors, uh, it's a privilege for me to welcome you to the groundbreaking service for the Casper Wyoming Temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Presiding today uh, at our service is Elder S. Gifford Nilsson, General Authority 70 and President of the North America Central Area of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He's accompanied today by his wife, Wendy. We welcome you both. I'm Steve Higginson, uh, president of the Casper Wyoming East Stake, and I'm here with my wife, Karen, and have been asked to conduct the service today. We're meeting inside the Casper Wyoming Stake Center today, uh, just a few blocks from the temple site due to a forecasted strong winds and cooler temperatures. Those of us here appreciate that, don't we? I welcome here uh, many civic and uh, uh, faith leaders from our community. We express appreciation for their demonstration of love and cooperation by being with us today. Among those leaders, I wish to welcome United States Senator John Barrasso. Thank you, Senator, appreciate you being here. Uh, Wyoming State Senator Drew Perkins and his wife, Christy. <clears throat> State Representative Steve Harshman. Uh, their districts encompass the temple site. We're glad to have them here with us. We welcome neighbors of the temple site from the Detrona County School District. School Board Vice Chair Clark Jensen and his wife Lorraine and Superintendent uh, of uh, Schools, Mike Jennings and his wife Kim. Thank you for being here. Um, we also recognize Pastor Nancy Boswell from First United Methodist Church. Pastor Nancy, thank you for joining us today. We welcome uh, to the stand President and Sister Palmer of the Fort Collins, Colorado Mission. And seated in the congregation, we have past and present stake and ward leaders, some of whom have traveled great distances and made great sacrifice to uh, join us today. We include in our welcome representatives from the Temple Department of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, contractors and members of the press. Thank you all for being here. Most importantly, <clears throat> I gratefully extend a welcome to the thousands of members of the Gillette Wyoming Stake the Riverton Wyoming Stake, the Warland Wyoming Stake, the Casper Wyoming Stake, and the Casper Wyoming East Stake, who are joining us via a video stream and who for decades have prayed for this blessing, a temple in our midst. We join together in expressing appreciation for Brother Steve Hopkins and Sister Peggy Hopkins and the members of the groundbreaking committee for their efforts in preparing for this service. Our program will go as follows. Our invocation will be offered by Sister Casey Hansen. Following Sister Hansen's invocation, we'll be blessed to hear from Sister Cindy Blevins. Following Sister Blevins' remarks, we'll be able to listen to Brother Robert Shinoweth. Following Brother Shinoweth's remarks, a youth choir made up of youth from the Casper area We'll sing a special musical number, Our Savior's Love, Abide With Me, under the direction of Brother Nathan Baker and accompanied by Sister Nicole Athey. 
following the youth musical number, we'll be privileged to hear some remarks from Elder S. Gifford Nielsen of the 70. Following Elder Nielsen's remarks, he will offer the dedicatory prayer. And following the dedicatory prayer, the benediction will be offered by Vince Irene, president of the Riverton, Wyoming stake. We invite you following the benediction, all who have been asked to take part in breaking ground and all here who are at that point willing to endure the weather and wish to witness the groundbreaking, we invite you to proceed to the temple site at the corner of Eagle Drive and Wyoming Boulevard. To those watching via video, because the weather moved uh, our service indoors, the groundbreaking itself will be taped and the video will be added to the end of this service when it is posted on the church's newsroom site. The invocation by Sister Hansen. Father in heaven, thank you for this day and for thy many blessings. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to have a temple in this area and the many blessings that it will that it will bring and the many eternal blessings that it will bring. We're grateful for the opportunity that it will that we will have to bring those unto Israel on both sides of the veil. And we are grateful for the peace and tranquility that it will bring and, and the refuge that the temple will be. And I say these things in the name of your life, Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I am pleased to be here today. I've been asked to speak about the history of the church in this area leading up to the announcement of the uh, Casper Temple. When I was baptized at age 16 in 1963, don't do the math, <laughs> Casper was in the Ogden, Utah Temple District. We traveled 407 miles, about a six hour trip in buses to the temple in Ogden. As the only member of the church in my family, those temple trips were an instrumental in building my testimony about the importance of temple work. The spirit in the house of the Lord was so wonderful and I wanted to attend again and again. Later, the Denver, Colorado temple in Littleton was dedicated in 1986. Then it took about five hours to travel to the Denver temple. When the Billings, Montana temple was dedicated in 1999, the trip to Billings shortened our travel time to a temple to about four hours. When the Fort Collins Temple was dedicated in 2016, the travel time was shortened this time to about three hours. The things of greatest worth to us today are membership in the church, the knowledge we have of God and his son, Jesus Christ, the plan of life and salvation in temples were all obtained by sacrifices, large and small, of many Latter-day Saints. As the hymn says, it is sacrifice that brings forth the blessings of heaven. Our area in, the Cas in Casper has been blessed beyond measure by much sacrifice and obedience. Brigham Young came through this area in 1847 in the Vanguard Company traveling to the Salt Lake Valley. At the Platte River Crossing near present-day Casper, Wyoming, Brigham Young established a ferry crossing asking nine men to stay behind and run the operation. I think it's kind of fun to think that these pioneers most likely hunted for rabbit, deer, and antelope on the very temple site that we're dedicating, breaking ground for today. Then the Willie and Martin Handcart Companies came through this area in the late fall of 1856. They crossed the freezing water of the Platte River near what is now Bessemer Bend. The effects of crossing at Bessemer Bend hastened the deaths of many who were already in failing health. Um, there were about 27 who died between Casper and Martin's Cove. There were about 224 overland companies of Mormon immigrants from 1847 to 1868, containing about 62,000 people. The journey into the wilderness was a great sacrifice and a conscious rejection of the world they left behind to journey to Zion. But it was also a journey during which they could develop into more righteous followers of God. 
Now moving a little forward in time. In 1919, with 15 people present, a small Sunday school was formed. They met in a rented building described in some of our local histories as a tar paper shack on David Street and Yellowstone. Four years later, in 1923, the first branch was created here. Sometime in 1926, a home was bought on 635 South Durban and renovated into a chapel. When the branch outgrew the building there, property was bought a block south on 802 South Durban Street. There, a chapel was dedicated by Elder George Albert Smith of the Quorum of the Twelve. In 1950, the Wyoming District was formed by Elders Harold B. Lee and Ezra Taft Benson. We became part of the Central Western Central States Mission, headquartered in Billings, Montana. In 1955, the Poplar Street Chapel was dedicated by Elder Marion D. Hanks of the First Council of the Seventy. Seven years later, in 1962, the Casper Stake, along with the Wind River Stake, and now the Riverton, Wyoming Stake, was formed from the Wyoming District by Elders Spencer W. Kimball and Howard W. Hunter of the Quorum of the Twelve. Kind of neat, isn't it? Um, in 1964, another chapel at 7th and Missouri in Casper was built, and Elder Franklin D. Richards, assistant to the Twelve, dedicated the building in 1966. In 1984, the Wolf Creek Stakes Center was dedicated by our stake president, Richard E. Wheeler. We were excited to have the three chapels in Casper. Now, sometime in 1991, the Riverton, Wyoming Stake commenced the second rescue of the William Han Martin Handcart Companies, seeking out those needing temple ordinances and attending the temple in their behalf. As a result of this effort, an outpouring of the Spirit spread throughout this region, indeed throughout the church. The sacrifices of these Handcart Companies were again blessing the saints. The historical sites pertaining to the two handcart companies were sought out and dedicated as a memorial to the companies, including Rock Creek, Martin's Cove, and Sixth Crossing. In 1996, the church acquired the historic Sun Ranch, situated around the Devil's Gate and Martin's Cove, from the Tom Sun families. In 1997, an agreement was reached with the Bureau of Land Management, which granted the church access to the actual cove itself. The Martins Cove Handcart Center and surrounding land was dedicated by President Gordon B. Hinckley that same year in 1997. In 2017, the new Murado Chapel in Casper was dedicated by our stake president, Millard Smathers. On the 6th of December, 2020, at a state conference presided over by Elder Matthew S. Holland, General Authority 70, and Elder Kevin J. Hathaway, Area 70, another stake was formed from the Casper, Wyoming stake, the Casper, Wyoming East stake. And it was done over the internet on Zoom because of the COVID. What a historic event. Who knew that all this labor, obedience, and sacrifice would put us on the road to having a temple in Casper someday? On the 4th of April, 2021, the Casper Wyoming Temple was announced by our prophet Russell M. Nelson during general conference, and it caused much joy in this area of Zion. My heart overflowed with joy and gratitude, and my eyes overflowed with tears. There are many who have prayed for this day to come. Our prayers and sacrifices have been answered. The many saints who sacrificed so much whose shoulders we stand on today are part of our heritage. We recognize and gratefully acknowledge them and their great sacrifices on this glorious day. A temple, a house of the Lord is being built in our small town. I love going to the house of the Lord. I have a testimony of the restored church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's Christ's church here upon the earth. I have a testimony of the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon, and I know that we have a living prophet on the earth today, even Russell M. Nelson. And I know great joy has been experienced on both sides of the veil because of the blessing of temple worship. And most of all, I know and love my Savior, even Jesus Christ, whom I worship and adore. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
<clears throat> the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will build and then dedicate to the Lord Jesus Christ a temple in Casper, Wyoming. On the front of this beautiful edifice will be the words, Holiness to the Lord and House of the Lord. The temple is the house of the Lord. He has told us that he will manifest himself therein. Each temple stands as a symbol of our membership in the church, as a sign of our faith in life after death, and as a sacred step toward eternal glory for us and our families. Each temple stands as a beacon to the world to express of our testimony that God, our eternal Father, lives, that he desires to bless us and indeed to bless all of his sons and daughters of all generations. Each of our temples expresses of our testimony that life beyond the grave is as real and as certain as is our life here on earth. In the temple, worthy members of the church receive God's ordinances of salvation and enter into covenants with God. An ordinance in the temple is a sacred formal act or ceremony performed by the authority of the priesthood. Ordinances essential to our exaltation include baptism, confirmation, ordination of the priesthood for the men, the temple endowment, and marriage sealing. A covenant in the temple is a sacred agreement between God and a person. God sets specific conditions and he promises to bless us as we obey the conditions. Temple ordinances and covenants of salvation help us remember who we are and remind us of our duty to God. They teach us how to become more like Jesus Christ. Among many things, they teach us how to become more patient, kind, forgiving, charitable, and loving to all of God's children. The sealing ordinance and covenant create the eternal family relationship so that families can be forever. The Lord's deep, unconditional love for each of his children is reflected in all of the words of his temple ordinances and covenants. <clears throat> As church members, we do have a divinely appointed responsibility to seek out our ancestors and, com and complete family <clears throat> histories. The ordinances of salvation are necessary for all of God's children, living and dead. And we are to identify our own ancestors who died without the ordinances of salvation. We can perform <clears throat> the ordinances vicariously in temples and our ancestors may choose to accept the ordinances. The Lord in this temple invites all the members of his church in Casper, Casper East, Gillette, Riverton, and Worland Stakes of Zion to help him in his work, which he described this way. 
For behold, this is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. We are reminded by Elder S. Gifford Nielsen, who is with us today, in his April General Conference talk this year, when he said, quote, we are all called upon to do life-changing things as representatives of the Lord. He will not forsake us. This is our time, end quote. This is indeed our time. In our own individual ways, we in this temple district have been asked by the Lord to become more obedient to his commandments, more worthy of his influence, more available for his service with more love for his children. After the dedication of this temple, there will be opportunities and requirements for hundreds of worthy members to serve as temple ordinance workers and volunteers, and hundreds of opportunities for worthy members to serve as patrons in the temple each week. This opportunity to serve, if accepted, will require significant changes in our lives. The time for us to prepare is now. I personally testify that God the Father lives, that his son Jesus Christ is our savior and our redeemer. I testify that God has a plan for all of his children to receive his ordinances and covenants through his holy temple. I know this will be a house of the Lord. While serving in his house, I have felt his presence and felt his love. I personally testify that of the great and enduring blessings that await us when we prepare and serve in the Casper Wyoming Temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen.
I would like to thank our young people for the beautiful job they did in setting such a wonderful setting for this sacred occasion. So thank you to them and thank you to President Higginson for leading us through this program, for Casey's opening prayer, the talks by Cindy and Robert. We have been richly edified and fed already. I bring the love of the First Presidency and the Quorum of the Twelve. What a joy it is to serve under the leadership of a 97-year-old prophet. He is so excited about what is happening with our temples around the world and very excited about what's happening here in Casper, Wyoming. So grateful to serve under the leadership of our dear apostles and prophets. We want to thank everybody who has participated in the ceremony today and acknowledge all who are gathered here and who are gathered through technology. We want to thank all of our civic and religious leaders who are in attendance. They support us so magnificently. And Senator, thank you specifically to you and the rest. Uh, we're so grateful that you're all here to enjoy this sacred time with us. One uh, couple that was not mentioned, Janice and Kevin Hyde, our leaders in the uh, Martins Cove Historical Site. We're so grateful to have you with us on this occasion. We express appreciation to all who have worked to make today possible here in Casper with our setup. It's a monumental task. I understand that many of our young people cleared the land for the temple site. Our technology experts here and in Salt Lake City at headquarters have been absolutely remarkable in every way. And a special thank you once again to our Casper Wyoming Temple groundbreaking coordinator, Steve and Peggy Hopkins. Working with Ray Whitesides in the Temple Department, they have put together this event quickly and in first class order. Our hearts are full of gratitude for them and their very special team, and it takes quite a team to put something like this together. Speaking with the Hopkins, we discussed the hope of a temple in Casper. They told me about faithful saints for decades that have been praying for a temple close to home, as Cindy mentioned. Many of those prayers have been offered by you attending this uh, ceremony. He related a story of his mother, Marie of the beginning of her hope that a temple would be built here someday, and here is her account. In October of 1962, Elder Spencer W. Kimball and Howard W. Hunter came to Casper to organize the Casper Wyoming Stake. Sisters from the area were asked to prepare a meal for those attending the related meetings. I don't think they knew at the time that they would be feeding the 14th and the 16th president of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter Presidents of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. During the break, Elders Kimball and Hunter came to the, uh, the kitchen to express appreciation for the excellent meal and for the service the sisters had given in growing the church in this area. And they told the sisters there would be many future opportunities to serve as the church would surely grow and expand, including the construction of a temple in the area someday. Well, Marie's hope is becoming a reality. We know many of you have had similar revelatory and miraculous experiences where the heavens have been opened to you and you have, you have heard the voice of the Lord speak to you about what is happening today. We invite you to record those experiences if you haven't already done so, and I invite you to write down the feelings that you're having today. This is a special journal entry for not only now, but also for those who will read and learn about this event in the future. This will strengthen your families. Last week, we held the Worldwide General Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Our inspired 97-year-old prophet, President Russell M. Nelson's Sunday morning address centered on the renovation of the Salt Lake Temple, specifically inviting the importance to build a strong foundation that will withstand the test of time. President Nelson said this, 
we are sparing no effort to give this venerable temple, which had become increasingly vulnerable, a foundation that will withstand the forces of nature into the millennium. In like manner, it is now time that we each implement extraordinary measures, perhaps measures we have never taken before to strengthen our own personal spiritual foundations. Unprecedented times call for unprecedented measures. My dear brothers and sisters, President Nelson continued, these are the latter days. If you and I are to withstand the forthcoming perils and pressures, is it, it is imperative that we each have a, a firm spiritual foundation built upon the rock of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. So I ask each of you, how firm is your foundation? And what reinforcements to your testimony and understanding of the gospel are needed? The temple, he continued, lies at the center of strengthening our faith and spiritual fortitude because the Savior and his doctrine are the very heart of the temple. Everything taught in the temple through instruction and through the Spirit increases our understanding of Jesus Christ. His essential ordinances bind us to him through sacred priesthood covenants. Then as we keep our covenants, he endows us with his healing, strengthening power. Oh, how we will need his power in the days ahead. End quote. What a blessing it is to be taught from on high through a prophet of God and to hear his inspired words. I love the scriptures in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20 and 21, that we are built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In verse 21, that the building fitly framed together, we fitly framed together with them to be an holy temple. President Nelson's focus should be our focus. I invite you to read and study his profound messages from last week's general conference and seek to understand the pure doctrine of Jesus Christ more deeply, especially as it relates to this significant event. I promise you additional insights that will bring peace and joy to your lives. Last week, President Nelson announced 13 more temples around the world. Two more in the North America central area, and that is our area. Wyoming is being richly blessed as Cody, Wyoming, will receive a house of the Lord. Rexburg North is also in our area. So in the last two general conferences, six new temples have been announced in the North America central area. And for that, we are so grateful. It says volumes about members in the North America central area to me as the area president. As President Nelson closed his first conference as the Lord's prophet, in April of 2018, he said this, Our message to the world is simple and sincere. We invite all of God's children on both sides of the veil to come unto their Savior, receive the blessings of the Holy Temple, have enduring joy, and qualify for eternal life. I think all of us need to ask these questions. Will we engage do we understand what our dear prophet is inviting us all to do, especially in this area? If so, how will we prepare ourselves? How will we prepare our friends, our neighbors, to be part of the special blessing of having a house of the Lord in the area? As Robert mentioned, this is our time. And what a beautiful and sacred time this is to participate in this exciting work. My dear brothers and sisters gathered here and joining us through technology, I bear my witness 
that I know that Heavenly Father has a beautiful plan for all of his children. I'm so grateful, and I bear my witness that I know that he gave us his only begotten son, even the Lord Jesus Christ, to come here to teach us, to love us, to care for us, to leave his doctrine, and then to atone for all of our sins so we could continue to perfect ourselves. The Holy Ghost teaches and testifies of God the Father and Jesus Christ and of all spiritual things. I bear my witness of that. And I also bear my witness that President Russell M. Nelson is his prophet. How grateful I am and how grateful we all are to be able to serve under his leadership. I pray that we will all build our own firm foundations centered on the Savior and his temples, especially the temple here in Casper, Wyoming. Now, my dear brothers and sisters here and joining us through technology, let's bow our heads for the groundbreaking prayer. Our loving and eternal Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. On this special morning, we gather as a few of thy daughters and sons to participating to participate in the groundbreaking for the Casper Wyoming Temple. We are humbled and overjoyed as we contemplate the blessing this temple will be to all who come here to participate in thy sacred and saving ordinances for themselves and for their beloved ancestors. We thank thee for granting that a temple be built here as a joyful place of connection with thee, with thy son and with loved ones here and with those who have graduated to the other side. We thank thee for the inspiration through which this site has been selected and prepared. It is a sign to us of thy great love for thy children in this important part of thy vineyard. We pray that this temple will be a beacon of light to this community that it will be seen by many and will draw hearts to thee and thy great work of gathering scattered Israel on both sides of the veil. Father, our hearts are drawn to the many thousands of valiant saints who in the early days of thy restored church passed through this region, some traveling by wagons, some pulling handcarts, and some carrying family members as they marched toward the Salt Lake Valley. With thy help and with faith in every footstep facing extreme weather conditions and challenging terrain, they courageously crossed the Platte River. May we never forget their unwavering effort and sacrifices. May this temple stand as a symbol of their commitment to thee and of their desire to build thy kingdom here on earth. Under the direction of our prophet, President Russell M. Nelson, and the First Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and by the authority of the Melchizedek Priesthood, I dedicate the prime piece of land in the selected choice location for the building of thy holy house. Soon there will be machinery and workers prepared and trained to carry out the work of construction We ask thee for thy guiding hand as the temple is being built. We pray that the foundation will be firm and immovable and that the work may move forward unimpeded and on schedule. Please help all workers involved to be protected, to be wise, and to utilize their skills at the highest level. Bless them that they will sense the significance of this project that they may feel thy power and feel constrained to acknowledge that thou hast sanctified this place to be thy house, a house of a place of holiness. May there be a spirit of worship and reverence among all involved, and may each give his or her best effort as a consecrated offering to honor thee and thy son. Our hearts are full of gratitude as we contemplate the magnitude of about 
of what is about to happen. This gathering is an answer to many prayers. We can only imagine the celebration on the other side of the veil among those whose sacrifices prepared the way for the blessings we enjoy today. Our hearts rejoice with them. How grateful we feel to know of thy eternal plan of happiness and thy restored gospel. We thank thee for the direction this knowledge gives us. We feel especially thankful for the gift of thy son, Jesus Christ. We marvel that he willingly left his heavenly home and came to this earth to fulfill all righteousness through his life, ministry, and atonement. We rejoice as we ponder his grace in helping us overcome the challenges of our own earthly journeys. We humbly acknowledge that this temple will be, as the inscription on the outside of all temples indicates, the house of the Lord. We humbly pray that each of us may increase in our own personal holiness to the Lord. Please open our eyes to see thy hand in our lives as we fully engage in thy sacred work of gathering thy children home to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads before thee, we are so very grateful for this wonderful opportunity that we have to receive a temple in this area. We are grateful for all those that have preceded us, that have laid the groundwork that we may reap these blessings. Father, we are so very grateful for thy son, for his and thy love for us, for his loving atonement and sacrifice for us that we may return to thee. We're so very grateful for the restoration of the gospel, for prophets, apostles, and for all those that diligently serve. Father, we pray that thou would bless this area. Father, we pray that thou would bless the hearts and the minds of all those in this area, that they'll be touched, that they will feel of thy love, and that they may come unto thee, that they may receive the blessings that thou hast promised them, that we may be unified, that we may be protected from the outside influences of this world. We pray for thy spirit to be richly poured out upon all people in this area, that they may know of thy love for them, that they may have hope and peace, prosperity and protection. These things we do humbly pray and thank thee for, in the name of thy beloved son, Jesus Christ, amen. amen.